Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be analyzing the congressional generic ballot and figuring out which party is likely to win the generic ballot at the end of the day. Of course, we have a lot of polls coming out now, some with Republicans in the lead, some with Democrats. So we're going to take a look at all of those as well as some previous midterm elections to sort of see the trajectory of this midterm at the end of the day because we've heard a narrative from both sides we've heard from republicans that this year is going to be a massive red wave and of course we've heard from democrats that this will be more of a red puddle or even somewhat of a blue wave so we're going to take a look at all of those scenarios of course we're going to look at the current polling that's out as well as some previous polls from previous midterms and sort of analyze the national environment overall and see what the trajectory of the polls is telling us about the 2022 midterms. Now we're only 11 days away, so we're getting extremely close. So my final predictions for governor, Senate, and House races will be out in November. Of course, we're just a few days away from that as well. So a lot coming on the channel. Of course, we're going to be doing our election night live stream. Once we hit the 10-day mark, we'll be releasing that. We'll also be releasing the Discord uh, before election night. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. So anyway, let's get straight into the video. But of course, before we begin, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing down below and liking this video if you enjoy. Now, the 2022 midterms are basically finally upon us. We're less than 10 days away from finally figuring out where the nation is going to swing, which party is going to uh, control the House, control the Senate, and ultimately it will determine if any major items of the Biden agenda will actually get passed. So if we take a look at midterms in general, midterms nowadays in the 21st century are really a referendum on the president and the party in power. And that's really how they've always been. But recently in the 21st century, minus 2002, you've always seen the party in power lose seats to some extent, whether it's seats in the House or seats in the Senate. Of course, in 2018, we had more of a mixed verdict where you had the Republicans lose the House, but they actually picked up seats in the Senate. So it's not always cut and dry. You have to take a look at the various contested races. And, you know, there's a number of other factors that determine uh, what party is going to control what chamber. But generally speaking, the party in power loses seats in both the House and the Senate. And of course, the main question in 2022 is whether or not the Republicans will win back the Senate. Uh, they're basically guaranteed to win the House. They only need a few seats. And uh, even RCP and other polling groups have already determined that uh, essentially, the seats leaning towards the Republicans already give them the majority. So now it's really a question of how large the majority of the Republican Party is. But this video isn't really focused on that. This video is to determine what the actual popular vote of 2022 will be when it's all said and done. So first, we're going to take a look at President Biden's approval rating, because like I said earlier, midterm elections are a referendum on the party in power and the president in power. And so far, 11 days out from the midterm elections, Joe Biden currently sits at around a negative 12 net approval rating. And of course, this is according to 538. If you go on civics and other sites, you'll have slightly different numbers. 538 actually tends to be the kindest to Joe Biden and the Democrats, which is why I use it, because it's sort of the best case scenario for the administration going into the midterm elections, but this certainly isn't a good number to say the least when you're going into a midterm, when you need to win seats uh, in both the House and the Senate to maintain control. Now we could take a look at this approval rating and compare it to other former presidents at this point in their presidency, which of course for all of them would be around the time of their first midterm election. Bill Clinton at this point in his presidency was at about a 44% approval rating. And the reason I start with him because he was, of course, president during the 1994 Republican Revolution. So I figure just starting with him is sort of relevant. He was at around 44%. George W. Bush was at 63. He was riding high after 9-11 and the response to that. Barack Obama was at 45% and Donald Trump was at 41. So Biden is doing worse than all of these presidents except Donald Trump. And he's only above Donald Trump by less than a point. So really within the margin of error, uh, Biden essentially is tied with Trump and he's doing worse than these other presidents. So if that's the case, you would expect this midterm year to be more of a bloodbath for the incumbent party than these other midterm years. I mean, George W. Bush was very popular in 2002. That kind of explains why Republicans did very well. Barack Obama was at 45%, which compared to the last president, and of course this current president, that's a decently high approval rating. And you know he got shellacked in the 2010 midterms. And then of course, Donald Trump, in 2018, picked up seats in the Senate, but he lost seats in the House. It was still considered somewhat of a blue wave, uh, but there were some upsides for the Republican Party as well. 
Now, going into this election, uh, things are a bit different because there's other circumstances at play. Of course, one of the issues that Democrats point to a lot is the issue of Roe v. Wade and how much that's going to impact Democratic turnout because in previous midterm elections, turnout is usually very low. Turnout among the out party, the party out of power, is usually decently high. Of course, we saw that with Barack Obama in both 2010 and 2014. The Republicans were extremely energized to come out and vote. And of course, we can take a look at those midterms. We'll go back to 2018. This was a year where Democrats were winning the popular vote by over eight percentage points. Obviously, it was a very good year for them. They picked up 41 seats in the House. Of course, if we go back to 2014, Republicans picked up 13 seats, but this, of course, was on the back of them picking up a historic amount of seats Back in the 2010 midterms, Republicans had 51% of the popular vote to the Democrats, 45. So this was an R plus 5 environment in 2014. Again, Barack Obama's approval rating was higher in 2014 than Biden's currently is today. And of course, we can go back to 2010, which at this point in Barack Obama's presidency, he was at a 45% approval rating. Total bloodbath for the Democratic Party. Republicans picked up 63 seats and won the popular vote by around six points. So those are the past three midterms that we have. Two were good years for Republicans, obviously, because that was during the Obama presidency, and one was good for the Democrats that was during the Trump presidency. So Republicans seem to hit usually around R plus five in these sorts of wave years for them in their midterms. Democrats seem to have a much higher ceiling. Of course, we can go back to 2006, the Democrats won the popular vote here by about eight points as well. So overall, the Democrats have a higher ceiling than the Republicans. Republicans have a lower ceiling just because Republicans make up less of the electorate than Democrats. They make up less percentage of the population. So naturally, their ceiling is going to be a bit lower. But looking at these races so far, we could compare these final results that the GOP saw to the polling that we have in these midterms. So of course, we're going to start off with the 2010 midterms. So after Obama's inauguration in 2009, the Democrats were up by a sizable margin in the generic ballot polling. Of course, they started at nearly 49%. And over time, that number started to erode as Barack Obama became less popular. The economic recovery was sort of slow. And Republicans really didn't see a surge uh, well into the lead until around July. And that's when the Republican surge really started. And in fact, in 2010 was one of the rare instances where Republicans are oversampled in polling. The RCP average had Republicans up by nine and they ended up winning by 6.8. I misspoke before. It wasn't five. It was six points. They won the congressional popular vote by 6.8%, nearly R plus seven, which explains really the monumental gains the GOP made in House districts that went to Barack Obama by a safe margin just two years earlier. Of course, we could take a look at 2014. This is a midterm that's been more compared to the current midterm. Of course, Democrats really were in the lead most of this midterm. I mean, there was even a high point for the Democrats in 2013, in October of 2013, where they were up by almost six points in the polling. And then, of course, it dropped back down to reality, and then you sort of had this neck and neck polling. And Republicans really didn't start to surge until after Labor Day. That's why a lot of Republicans and GOP pundits were saying that you were going to start to see this polling shift after Labor Day. And it took a couple of weeks. There was sort of a lag, but now we're starting to see it in the RCP average for the 2022 midterms. Now, of course, the 2018 midterms, polling for Democrats seems to be a lot more reliable uh, throughout this entire uh, cycle, really going back to November of 2017. Uh, Democrats were always in the lead. There was a close point in the summer of 2018, but then, of course, after that, you've really had a consistent lead for the Democrats essentially the entire time, starting off as D, D plus nine, and ending off at around D plus seven. And ultimately, the polls slightly underestimated Democrats, but it was certainly within the margin of error, so they were pretty reliable in that respect. It had Democrats up by 7.3. They won by 8.4. And finally, 2022 puts the Republicans at a 2.3 margin over the Democrats in the generic ballot. The latest poll, Insider Advantage, has Republicans up by four. Uh, this polling had Republicans up most of the cycle. Again, it starts back in October of 2021. Republicans were leading in the generic ballot pretty consistently on RCP. This isn't 538, which uh, tends to be more democratically skewed. And then, of course, we had a period in the post-Dobbs era where a lot more Democrats seemed to be energized. You also had the summer lull of politics. A lot of people were busy doing other things, not really paying attention to the general election. And then finally, really late in the game, really end of September, 
Republicans finally start to take the lead again in the generic ballot. And there's been some Democrats that have questioned these polls. They've been saying that these are right-wing polls that have Republicans up, but the vast majority of polls, CNBC, CBS News, Battleground Tracker, all of these polls have Republicans up. And of course, the RCP average is an average of all the polls. So of course, not all the polls are going to agree with each other. There's outliers in these polls, but all the outliers create a pretty accurate aggregate. And again, when we take a look at all of the RCP averages, um, they're all really within the margin of error. I mean, 2014 was probably um, 2014 and 2010 were uh, the bigger misses. Obviously, the 2010 oversampled Republicans in 2014. They undersampled them, of course, in 2018, slightly undersampled Democrats. And now the real question is, will the RCP average undersample Democrats or will it undersample Republicans? Because currently we're looking at R plus 2. Um, you know, if we're undersampling Republicans a little bit, we're looking at maybe R plus three, R plus four, even R plus five potentially could all be in the realm of possibility. Now, I think if we weren't living in such a politically polarized climate, uh, I would say you'd see an even larger red wave just because of the backlash effect, similar to what we saw in 2010 and 2014. But I don't think we're going to see something as dramatic as that. But the circumstances certainly would call for it. Again, the economy is really in a bad position uh, Biden is very unpopular. There's a lot of people struggling economically. Crime is a huge issue. And overall, there's a general discontent with the direction of the country. So you'd imagine that Republicans would at least win the generic ballot based on that alone. And of course, Democrats' alone argument for the reason that wouldn't be the case, of course, is Roe v. Wade. And I think as we've seen more and more polls come out with the various issues that affect voters the most, whether it's inflation, whether it's rising gas prices, the economy... Uh, in general, crime, these other issues, they seem to take the forefront well over the issue of abortion. In fact, abortion in a lot of these polls is fourth or even fifth. This really only is an issue to people that are very ideologically liberal anyway, that really aren't going to vote Republican anyway. A lot of voters' top concern is the economy, and I think that's going to play a key role in which party ultimately ends up winning the generic ballot. And of course, Republicans are getting very high marks on their economic positions because voters are looking to them as the out party. They're looking to them for solutions because they're not currently in power and they want to see what the Republicans will do with power. So ultimately looking at these polls, we've had polling misses that undersample Republicans. Polls nowadays tend to undersample Republicans anyway. Of course, this is national. So of course, if Republicans win the popular vote this election, it'll be the first time they've won the popular vote nationally since 2014, so almost a decade. Uh, but I think they're going to be able to do it because of the unique circumstances. So ultimately, polling has it around R plus two. Uh, I think we're probably looking at around an R plus four environment. That's my prediction. I think Republicans aren't going to do as well as 2014. They're certainly not going to do as well as 2010, but they're still going to win the popular vote by four points. And that is going to have big impact in not just House races, which is you know, these are the sum total of all of those elections, but it also is going to have a big impact in Senate races. I think it's going to carry a lot of Republican Senate candidates to the top. Dr. Oz in Pennsylvania, Herschel Walker in Georgia, Blake Masters in Arizona, and Adam Laxalt in Nevada. It would be very unlikely for the Republicans to win the generic ballot by four points and have somebody like Walker lose in Georgia, which is a state that votes four points to the right of the nation, have Dr. Oz lose in Pennsylvania in a state that votes three points to the right of the nation, so on and so forth. So when you start putting those factors together, and again, it's not an exact science, of course, just because there's an R plus four environment doesn't mean Mark Kelly in Arizona can't barely hold on to his seat. There's other factors at play. There's incumbency, there's favorability ratings. So there's many things that contribute to a party's overall midterm performance. But my opinion on this is that the Republicans are gaining momentum at the right time. People are breaking late to the Republicans, and that's a good thing for the GOP because if they were breaking for the GOP uh, earlier on, maybe in September, August, they could lose momentum. They could kind of get fatigue and ultimately not have the momentum necessary to have a really good performance in the midterm. And you know, for a while, a lot of Republicans were worried about that, especially after Dobbs uh, when there sort of was a drop-off for the GOP in polls. And again, it wasn't right away. There was a lag a couple of weeks. But even I was of the impression that Republicans might not do as well as national circumstances would say they would. But again, the fundamentals of politics 
are fundamentals for a reason. Ultimately, the economy is not in a good position. Many people are feeling pessimistic about the country and they're going to vote for the out party. So my final prediction for the generic ballot is R plus four. I think Republicans will win the popular vote by around four percentage points. And of course, I'm going to factor that in to my final predictions that'll be out just a few days before election day. So anyway, thank you all for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, like this video down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. We'll be uploading near daily content until the midterm elections. And at the 10 day mark, I'm going to try to do two videos a day. I have some videos already prepared, ready for that on various specific races. So stay tuned for that. Obviously, as always, again, thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.